everyone. This is Pete from RippedLabs.com and Multimuscle.com. I'm really excited to have you on this webinar today. I've got a very special guest. His name is Dr. Carl Juno. Uh, I'm going to read his biography. So if you see my eyes looking down, it's because I'm I don't have it memorized. But he is an exercise and uh, scientist with a PhD uh, from Montreal University. I'm not going to pretend to pronounce what it's in, but uh, it translates to health statistics. He's been a natural lifter for over 16 years and has been a trainer for the Canadian Forces and hundreds of clients, both online and offline. Um, his number one passion is finding the best science-based strategies to build muscle faster, which is what we're here uh, to learn about today. So welcome. Uh, Dr. Carl, or as I like to refer to you, uh, Dr. Muscle. Thank you very much, Pete. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. One of the the things that, that we focus on here at uh, Ripped Labs are, are strategies to obviously build muscle uh, more efficiently and more effectively. And I'm really excited to hear about uh, the four strategies that you're going to teach us about today. I'm going to go ahead and make you a presenter. Let me go ahead and click on this button. And then hopefully if this works technology wise, we'll be able to see you and, and, uh, and eventually see your screen. Okay, Pete, thank you very much. And before I begin with the science-based training strategies to build muscle faster, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about myself and my background. So I was born in beautiful Montreal, Quebec, and Canada. I'm French-Canadian. And when I was six years old, I saw this guy, Kevin Costner, in the movie Robin Hood. And I thought, wow, I need to be like this guy. So I started doing archery. And I did archery from 6 to 17. I was a national level athlete. At 16, my coach had me start doing weightlifting so I could pull heavier bows. And at 17, he sat with me and he was like, I wanted to go to the Olympics, you know, like a lot of young athletes. And he sat with me and he was like, okay, Carl, if you want to do that, you'll have to quit school, get a part-time job, train full-time. And if you're lucky, you'll never get a medal at the Olympics because Canada has never scored anything in archery. Then at 35, you'll quit archery, you'll have no education, no career, and you'll be broke. This is basically what he told me. So um, I thought about it and I said, thank you very much. I'm done with archery. <laughs> and uh, at that point, I had already started uh, lifting weights. I was a skinny kid and I saw what the big guys, how much of an impression they made. When a big, strong and muscular man got into a room, it's as if everyone gave him credit and respect uh, automatically. And I was Im as impressed as everybody was. So. I wanted to weight, uh, lift weights to build muscle. As an athlete, I had free workout plans at the gym where I trained. And just to be sure, uh, Pete, can you still hear me? Everything's good? Yep, you're all good. I can hear you. Okay, beautiful. So I had free workout plans. So I would just go to a trainer. These guys were uh, qualified trainers with a bachelor's degree. And I would tell them I wanted to build muscle. So I would tell this to one trainer and I would get a workout plan. I would do that plan for about two months. Then I would stop getting results. I wasn't gaining a lot of muscle and then I, was, I would get a bit stronger in the exercises, lift more weight, but after about two months, nothing happened. So I would go to another trainer, tell that trainer exactly the same thing, that I wanted to build muscle and then the strangest thing would happen. I would get a completely different program. I, I really didn't understand that because I thought, wow, isn't this supposed to be a science? How come I tell two trainers with more or less the same s studies and qualification and they give me two different workout plans? Isn't there some principle and science behind this that they should be all following so that their workout plans are pretty much the same or at least they have some of kind of continuity between them. Boy, I didn't see that. And I was really struck by that. So since I was enjoying working out, I went to see the counselor at school, um, asked him if there was any 
career or study as a coach. I was already coaching athlete in archery. And um, so I wanted to become a professional trainer. And he told me about exercise sciences. It's called kinesiology here in Montreal and in and, and other universities. Um, I know that. And so I went and did a bachelor's degree in exercise sciences. At the end of that, I realized that a lot of people don't do the minimum uh, exercise that they should be doing for their health. And we know this. I mean, Pete, I've seen photos of you. I know you work out and you're a beast. And uh, I work out, and I'm sure the people listening to this are in great shape. I've seen some of the comments, by the way, from your customers. And, and you're blessed to have these people. They're serious lifters. But people in the general population, I mean, they're overweight. And they don't work out. So I thought, I need to be helping these people. I went and studied in public health. I did a master's and then a PhD, and I specialize in epidemiology. And I would, won't bore you with the details, but epidemiology is health statistics, basically. But while I was doing this, my number one passion was still building muscle. And between my bachelor's and my master's, I worked as a trainer for the Canadian Forces. And I, so I've taken all the things I learned in epidemiology, statistics, understanding science, understanding research, and I brought this to my passion, which is building muscle. So now I can really understand the science, find the best strategies, and answer the question I was asking myself when I was 16, 17, and doing these random workout plans. I was thinking, well, should there be some science behind that? And what are the principles that everyone could follow to build muscle faster. I would have liked to have these principles uh, when I was a kid. And now what I did was basically search for them and come up with a few of these principles. And now I'd like to share three of those with you today. Hey, what a, what a great story. I'm sure everyone uh, on this webinar can relate. I, I know I certainly can. Um, had the had very similar experiences growing up when I first started working out and, and I would get advice from, from so many different people, whether it was, you know, a football coach or one of my buddies, you know, another like big guy that I saw lifting at the gym or like a pro from one of the fitness magazines, you know, everyone would tell you something different and nothing seemed to be based on science. It was just all based on, on conjecture or their own personal experience. So uh, that's why I really love what you, you do here. And I, I really can't wait to hear more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's begin. I, I'm going to start with some pictures. Uh, this is me uh, at an outdoor event with the Canadian forces. I'm just showing you these pictures. So you know that I'm not making this up. This is me getting my PhD at the university of Montreal. This is me. Uh, in my natural state, I was telling you I don't, uh, I'm a skinny guy, so on the left, I had been sick actually for a bit of time and couldn't work out. So this is what I look like when I don't work out. And on the right, this is what I look like when I can work out. So you can see that I do even lift. And this is me in a powerlifting contest. So I do natural bodybuilding and um, a bit of amateur powerlifting. And really, this is just my number one passion. So let's jump in with the three science-based training strategies. Number one is use daily undulating periodization and change reps every workout to build strength and muscle faster. Next, we're going to see finish strong with a plus set to find out how much heavier you should lift to keep building muscle fast. And then at the end, third one, we'll see Add new exercises as you max out old ones to hypertrophy more muscle fibers. Let's begin with the first one, which is use daily undulating periodization, or DUP, and change reps every workout to build strength and muscle faster. I will present the results of a study. The title of the study is A Comparison of Linear and Daily Undulating Periodized Programs with Equated Volume and Intensity for Strength. This was published by Matthew Rhea and his colleagues from the University of Arizona in 2002. So this is one of the earlier studies on DUP and 
Many more have been published since, but this one is really striking. So I wanted to show you that one. Here's what they did. 20 young men were randomly assigned to normal training or DUP training. And I'll show you exactly what they did in a minute. They all trained bench press and leg press three days a week for the whole study. So the normal training group, this is on the left of this screen, they did sets of eight during the four weeks, sets of six during four weeks, and sets of four during four weeks for a total of 12 weeks. This was a 12-week study. On the right of the screen, you have the DUP training group. These guys did sets of eight on Monday, sets of six on Wednesday, and sets of four on Friday during all 12 weeks of the study. So basically, they were doing the same number of reps, but one group did the same reps for four weeks at a time, while the other group changed reps every training day. This is why this method is called daily undulating periodization, because reps undulate, they change every day. Here's what happened. After 12 weeks of training, guys who did DUP had double the strength gains. So they improved bench press 29% versus 14% for guys who did normal training. And they improved leg press 55% versus 26% for guys who did normal training. So they really doubled their strength gains. How to do it? If you want to apply DUP so you can build strength and muscle faster, well, you can do it just like in the study. You could do sets of eight on Monday, sets of six on Wednesday, and sets of four on Friday. Here's a model I propose for hypertrophy with a few more reps. So we know that we like to work in the four, maybe six to 12 reps range to build muscle. So I've put in more reps in this model. You can follow this model for three weeks. On week one, you will do Monday, 12 reps, Wednesday, six reps, and Friday, nine reps. On week two, you will do 11 reps on Monday, five reps on Wednesday, and eight reps on Friday. And for week three, you will do 10 reps on Monday, four reps on Wednesday, and seven reps on Friday. When you're done at week four, you just cycle back to week one. So about this template, you'll always perform between four and 12 reps. And most bodybuilding coaches agree this is the best rep range to build muscle and strength. For, for strength, we're going to go as low as four, and for muscle, we're going to go as, as high as 12. And you'll perform fewer reps and do less volume on Wednesday. This enhances recovery and may be the best DUP pattern. So I'm ready to jump into the next strategy. Could um, I ask a quick question before we yes. move on, if you don't mind? Go ahead. I was about to ask you. Yes. Yeah. So as far as the amount of weight then we should do, uh, should we try to, to basically do as much as we can to hit failure on those number of reps, or are we using a percentage of of what we would typically use? It would be uh, as much as you can to hit failure on, on these reps. You know, we could get more detailed and technical at this point, but I, want, I wanted to keep it easy. A little bit uh, later in the presentation, I'll give you a strategy that helps you choose the right weight, actually. Perfect, sounds good. Just wanted to make sure that the goal was to actually try to hit failure on each set. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, awesome, thank you. Okay, the next strategy is the one I've just told you about that's going to help us choose the right weight. And this one uh, I titled Finish Strong with a Plus Set to find out how much heavier you should lift to keep building muscle fast. And this one comes from another study titled The Effective Auto-Regulatory Progressive Resistance Exercise versus Linear Periodization on Strength Improvement in College Athletes. It was published by Brian Mann and Collings in 2010, and these guys are at the University of Missouri. So here's what they did. They had 23 collegiate football players 
train using two different strategies for progression. And I'll just take a quick pause here. Progression, when you lift weight, is the name of the game. You want to get stronger so you can get bigger. You need to progress. If you're not progressing, you're almost waiting your time. You're just wasting your time. You're, you're maintaining, but you don't want to maintain. You want to get more muscular. And to do that, you need to progress. So this is a strategy to progress faster, which means get stronger and get uh, more muscular faster. In that study, they tested two different strategies. The first one was plus sets, or sometimes called AMRAP sets, and i tell you exactly what it is in a minute. Or the second strategy was to increase weights by a set amount each week, and this is still a popular strategy. So for that group that increased by a set amount, for the squat, for example, they did three sets of eight at 75% 1 RM during week one. They did four sets of six at 75% 1 RM during week two. They did four sets of five at 80% during week three. And then they did four sets of five at 85% during week four. So they really had this set increase pre-planned in their program, and they just followed the program for the duration of the study. After six weeks of training, the plus set strategy proved superior. So for, for guys who did plus sets, they increased their bench press 1RM by 93 newtons. Now, I don't know about you, Pete, but I was a little bit um, disappointed to see the researchers use Newtons in that study. We're not really used to uh, lifting Newtons, and um, we don't really know what it translates to in the gym and pounds on the bar. But um, a little bit later, you'll see another result that we can understand a bit better. Their bench press increased 93 Newtons, uh, but for guys who did normal training, it didn't increase, actually went down a little bit. The estimated squat, 1RM, increased by 192.7 newtons versus only 37 newtons for guys who did normal training. And this is the result that everybody's going to understand and love. Their 225-pound bench press reps to fatigue increased by three they did three more reps with a 225 bench press, whereas guys in the normal training group, they didn't increase at all. And they probably used this test because in, for football players, this is a standard test. They need to improve their performance at the 225 bench press, which is two plates. So bottom line, guys who used the plus set strategy, they got stronger faster. And they were also able to bench press 225 pounds for three extra reps after just six weeks of training, whereas guys who did normal training weren't able to do even one extra rep. So this is a big improvement, a big difference. So why was this strategy superior? The authors uh, explain that it allows adaptation of a particular workout by the individual athlete based on their abilities for that particular day. And in other words, this strategy makes sure you push yourself every workout and helps you pick just the right weight to keep building strength and muscle fast. So how do you do it? Well, here's what they did in this study. For a set of 6RM, so, so that's six repetition with a maximal weight, the Dr. Men and colleagues, they gave the following guidelines. On your first set, you would warm up. So you would do 12, uh, 10 reps at 50% of your anticipated 6RM. On the second set, you would do six reps at 75% of the anticipated 6RM. So you're still warming up. And then on your third set, you do as many repetitions as you can with a hundred percent of your anticipated 6RM. This is your plus set, is the third set. 
And then on the fourth set, you adjust based on your results from the previous set. So how much weight should you add to the bar after your plus set? Remember, you put the weight that you thought you would do for six reps. So if you did five to seven reps, um, men, the scientists recommend you keep weight the same. If you did eight to 12 reps, he says you should add five to 10 pounds. And if you did 12, uh, 13 reps or more, you should add 10 to 15 pounds. So basically, the more reps you did, the easier the exercise was, the more weight you should add for your next set and from that point on. And you're really tailoring your progression and the weight on the bar to your actual performance in the gym. So you're not wasting time training with a weight that's too light. You're really increasing that weight and making progress as fast as you can. And this is why in that study, guys who trained with this method, they were able to bench press 225 pounds for three more reps in just six weeks, while the other guys, they didn't even improve. Here's a caveat. Adding five pounds to the bar won't feel the same if you squat 100 or 1,000 pounds. And if you look at the recommendation from Dr. Mann, he says you should add five, 10 pounds, 10, 15 pounds. But if you squat 100 or 1,000, uh, it's not the same. So it makes sense, and I'm at the second point here back on this slide, it makes sense to follow relative guidelines when applying this strategy. And I got this tip from Dr. Mike Zordos, another great researcher in the field of strength and conditioning. So I've combined Dr. Mann's and Dr. Zordos guidelines to make the following guidelines for plus sets for hypertrophy for building muscle. So here's how I think you should do it if you want to build muscle. You would start with 10 reps at 50% of your anticipated 6RM, then you do six reps at 75%, then you do as many repetitions as you can with 100% of your anticipated 6RM. Then if you did five to seven reps, you will keep weight the same. If you did eight to 10, you will add 1%. If you did 10 to 12, you will add 2.5%. And if you did 13 or more, you will add 4%. Then on the next set, set, num set number four, you will do as many reps as you can with your new weight. So this time, the increase is relative for your exercise. I'm done for strategy number two. Pete, do you have any comments at this point? Yes, uh, I, I love this um, this study. Those results are are off the chart. Um, I, I played football in college, so that, you know, like you said, the goal was always uh, to see how many reps you could do at 225. In fact, at the NFL Combine, where they uh, test all of the athletes that they're preparing for the draft, uh, that is the standard measure of strength, is to see how many reps they can do at 225. Um, so, this is a, obviously a fantastic strategy, and I love what you did here by, by taking it one step further and actually improving on the original study by adding this relative percentage specifically for the goal of increasing muscle. Thank you very much, but I do want to give credit to Mike Zordos here on this one, but thank you. Yep, awesome. Okay, let's move to the next and last strategy. This one is add new exercises as you max out old ones to hypertrophy more muscle fibers. And the old title for this was to add new exercises in rotation. So I'll tell you about this in a minute. So here's the rationale. Every exercise you do targets some parts of your muscles more than others. So when you max out an exercise, it makes sense to add a new one to your routine to hypertrophy your muscles fully. Imagine you work out your chest. Here's an example. Let's say you do incline bench press, and this one targets the clavicular head of your pectoralis major. 
and you do decline bench press, and this one targets the sternocostal head of your pectoralis major. By doing three sets of each, you hypertrophy your chest in full. You target the top and the bottom, basically, more, and you hypertrophy it more than you would have if you had done six sets of incline bench only. Exercise scientists call this regional muscle hypertrophy, and this is the reference. Um, and Beardsley in 2016 reviewed the science on regional hypertrophy and noted that it may occur because some parts of muscles are sufficiently activated during an exercise while others are not. And then he quotes uh, Wakahara, I, I hope I pronounced this right, and it says he measured regional differences in post-exercise muscle activation during a single training session using MRI scans, as well as the actual hypertrophy following a long-term training intervention for the triceps. And they found that differences in regional activation while you're working out in certain parts of a muscle were correlated with increases in muscle size over many weeks in the same parts of the muscle. In other words, if you want to hypertrophy your muscles in full, you should do multiple exercises that stimulate growth in different regions of your muscle. The question now becomes, when, do you, when should you add new exercises to your routine? So let's start with an example. You're a beginner or you have a new client and you start training for the bench press. On day one, maybe you do just the bar, 45 pounds. After two weeks of bench press, you're at 95 pounds and you've increased 50 pounds. After four weeks, you're at 115 and you've increased 20 pounds. After six weeks, you're at 125 and you've increased 10 pounds. And after eight weeks, you're at 130 and you've increased five pounds. So you're increasing um, every two weeks, but your increase is becoming lower and lower as you get stronger. This is a brand new client. So from that point on, your inclined press, I think I wrote bench press, but it's an example for the inclined press. This is why the weights are a little on the low end. From that point on, your incline press has more or less stalled, okay? It's almost maxed out. In the last two-week block, you've increased only five pounds. So you're not making a lot of gains. You've already gained most of your strength for that exercise. Now that you're strong and you lift heavy, this exercise stimulates parts of your muscles hard. It has become a good driver for hypertrophy for these parts of your muscle. But this hypertrophy is specific to your upper pectorals. So instead of almost wasting your time training the incline bench press again and again, you would do well to train another related exercise to hypertrophy another region of your pectorals. The decline bench press would be a perfect uh, would be perfect in this example because it targets the bottom of your pectorals. So when should you add a new exercise to your routine? The answer is when your previous exercise for that muscle group has maxed out. Let's recap. You work out your chest. You start with the incline press. At first, you train the incline press every time you train your chest because you're still making progress fast. So your routine looks like this. On day one that you do chest, you do incline press. On day two, you do incline press. On day three, you do incline press. You're training just the incline press. After eight weeks, you've maxed out the incline press. So you add in the decline press. Your routine now looks like this. On day one that you press, you do incline press. On day two, you do decline press, and then you're back to incline, and then back to decline. So you rotate between exercises like this. 
And this lets you maintain or even slightly improve your incline press while also bringing up your decline press. You train for another eight weeks, and now you've also maxed out your decline press. So you add in a new exercise. You add the flat bench to your rotation. Your routine now looks like this. Day one, incline. Day two, decline. Day three, flat. And then start again. Day four, decline. Day five, incline. And day six, flat. Actually, you know what? I think I made a small mistake here. Day four should be incline. You're back to day one. And day five should be decline. You're back to day three. Basically, you're doing incline, decline, flat, and then start over, incline, decline, flat, and start over again. So once again, this routine lets you maintain your incline and decline while you bring up your flat bench press. You're now training three exercises for your chest and you hypertrophy your pectorals in full. Back to the question, when should you add a new exercise to your routine? The answer is only when your previous exercise for that muscle group has maxed out. And this is a big mistake I see a lot of people make and that my trainers when I was 16 were making me make because they would give me a whole new program with new exercises. So I would stop training, in this case, the incline bench press. I would start training maybe the decline. But as I am bringing up my decline, I was losing my incline. So you got to start with one exercise, bring it up and keep it up. And then you rotate a new exercise in. You maintain your old one. You bring up the new one. When you're done with the new one, you've brought it up. It's more or less topped. You add a third exercise and so on. I think this is a, the best time to add a new exercise. You should do it when your previous exercise for that muscle group has maxed out. If it has not maxed out, you should keep training the old one until you've squeezed all the juice and the muscle hypertrophy you can out of this exercise. I'm done with this point. Uh, we can recap. Do you have uh, questions at this point, Pete? Uh, yeah, sure. Just a, a couple of comments on that last strategy. Uh, anyone that's been a, a serious lifter or has been lifting for a long time has probably run into this strategy at some point in their in their lifting career. Um, I, I know that I certainly, you know, utilize that strategy. Uh, for me, I have notebooks and notebooks of, of workouts where I've had to, you know, manually track uh, how many sets am I doing, how many um, uh, reps am I getting, what weight uh, am I at, and, you know, as well as my growth with, with a tape measure, so am I growing or not growing, and once I got to the point where I stopped getting stronger and or stopped growing, then I knew that it was time to, to make a switch. Uh, Another reason that I use that strategy is to avoid injury for, from overuse. So if, if all I did was, you know, say flat bench and, and that's it, um, you know, then I would tend to uh, get sore in a certain part of my shoulders or, or something along those lines. So, um, you know, fantastic strategy. The, the way that I've had to track it, though, has always been a lot of work. Oh, sure. Yeah. And I think it's smart that you train that way. And I like your point about injuries. Uh, when you get real strong with an exercise, if you keep doing it as frequently as you used to do it, you're lifting so heavy, it becomes hard on your joints. This has been my experience uh, also, and I think it's pretty well established. Many people agree on that. Yep, absolutely. Okay, let's recap. So the first strategy was Use daily undulating periodization and change reps every workout to build strength and muscle faster. The second one was finish strong with a plus set to find out how much heavier you should lift to keep building muscle fast. And the third strategy was add new exercises in rotation as you max out old ones to hypertrophy more muscle fibers. 
we're done with this uh, with the training strategies and I'd like to show you a preview of a new app that we built that's in early access right now I think you'll see it this app is called dr. muscle and it's a new app that helps you build muscle and strength faster with science that uses and applies automatically the training strategy I've just told you about. So Dr. Muscle tells you what to do when you work out to build muscle and strength faster. It uses AI to learn from your last workouts and apply the best bodybuilding science automatically so you can focus on lifting heavy and getting jacked. Now, let me tell you why I developed this app. I was a coach, a trainer for many years, and my clients hire me to tell them what to do. As a coach, I really wanted my client to understand what happened and make them more autonomous so they can make their own decisions. But the thing they would keep telling me over and over is, what should I do? How much should I live? Just tell me what to do. What, how, like what weight to put on the bar, how many reps to do. If they wanted to know me to tell them exactly what to do every workout. And I can understand them. I mean, this stuff is pretty complex. Me, when I work out, I understand it. I've studied it. I know how to change my own workout plans. So I can apply it and use it in my own training to build muscle faster. But I really needed a way to help my clients apply these strategies by themselves because I can't be there every time they're working out. And I can't be with everybody at the same time. Plus, it's super expensive for clients to pay a personal trainer every session to be with them. Not everyone can afford that. So I built this app that applies the best bodybuilding science automatically. It applies daily undulating periodization. We've just talked about that at this time. It's already implemented in the app, and we're going to implement the other training strategies we just talked about. So it's an early access now, and um, Pete, I've seen uh, the type of people that use your supplement. I've seen uh, you have a great testimonial from Tim Spark, Sparks, this guy's a 10-time world record power lifter. You have very serious and dedicated lifters using your supplement. And this is the kind of lifters I like to work with. And this is the kind of lifters I built this app for. So um, if your audience would like to use and test this app while it's in early access, um, I've given you a special link that you can... Uh, pass over to your people. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you'll see a, a button below this video. Uh, you'll be able to click that button and go over to a page where you'll see a uh, demonstration um, where uh, Dr. Carl takes you through the app and, and shows you that the different aspects of it. And I, I, this, I'm really, really excited about this app. I, I actually installed it on my phone. Uh, I've been using it for several weeks now. Um, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, I'll switch back to my camera in a minute here, and I'll show you the old way that I've been tracking my workouts versus <laughs> versus the new way. I and, and I'm seeing that. <laughs> and I'm sure most of you, you know, feel feel the exact same uh, way that I do. Um, but so not only is is Dr. Carl going to give us uh, special pricing on the app, and that's lifetime pricing. So uh, the regular price, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but it's it's forty nine dollars per month right now. Exactly. And as uh, and if you click on that button below and you buy the app through our link, you're only going to pay thirty nine dollars per month, and that's for the lifetime of the app. And that covers all future improvement and development of the app. Um, I, I know that you're already working on some upgrades and you'll be constantly rolling those out as you get more feedback. Yes, we've already uh, increased the price twice. And as we add in new feature, we 
slowly raise the price. So now this is a good time to get in and lock in that lower price. It's not for everyone, and this is early access, so you need to be willing to provide feedback. But if you're a serious lifter and you want to kind of leave me, find the best science and implement it, so you focus on lifting heavy and building muscle, I think this may be a great solution for you.